back with another reaction video if you're new to this channel make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe like i said my name is fanny lungu and on this channel we post reaction videos each and every day so if there's something that you guys want us to react to let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to do it so today i'm going to be reacting to amazing story of a phd student from medina allah guides who he will so without wasting time let's get into the video السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد. I mentioned many times in many videos that my Quran teacher here in the Mahar, uh, here in the Arabic Institute, here in the Islamic University of Al Medina, that he is سبحان الله he is a man بارك الله عليه وسلم bless him and reward him tremendous with خير because every single lesson he gives us something. Something, yani dhahabi, is something of gold to take home, and I don't mean homework. Rather, he gives us something that renews our iman, that inspires us, that motivates us. Um, in regards to uh, always connected to the Quran and Kareem because he's the Quran teacher. Today was no different. Barakallahu fikum. Today was no different. Rather, he gave us another gem. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward him uh, with khayr aldeen, with tremendous good. He mentioned that there was a student here in the doctorate program. He reached the level of the PhD, and he was uh, he was close to graduating. Maybe maybe a year, a year and a half left until um, until he finished his studies here, getting his PhD in the Islamic University of Medina in the College, actually of uh, of uh, the Quran. And I believe the student was from America. He didn't actually mention where he was from, but from the context, I was uh, I believe that he was from the West, maybe Canada, or the United States. So this individual. His parents were not here, of course. His parents were in their home country, uh, whether that be Canada or the United States. And his father was a Muslim. His father actually was Muslim, but not practicing at all. His mother was a Christian, was an actual Christian, did not, you know, didn't claim to be Muslim. She was an actual total Christian. And they were married. His father and his mother, mashallah, they were married, even though his father actually um, was a Muslim, uh, even though it was only by name. So after being here for, Perhaps 10 years, the, the, the brother, you know, going back every summer to visiting and giving the rights to his family. Um, his father said, I want to come visit you. I want to come visit you. So, uh, of course, the, the student here is living off campus, you know, as he's, uh, he's here with his wife and his children. So he says to his father, yeah, come. You can come and visit and stay for a couple months. And so he comes. Mind you, he doesn't really know the situation of his father. He knows his father isn't really religious, but he doesn't know how ignorant, and I say that not in a disrespectful way, really meaning how uneducated he is about Islam. So he would, he would become shortly to find out about that. So he would come, when his father came, he, he noticed that his father would never come with him to the prayer. And he said, Father, why don't you, you know, come with me? He says, you know, I'll come with you, you know, later on, always pushing it off. Finally got to the point where he says to his son, take me to the, this place that you go and pray. He didn't even know what the place was called. He didn't even know he was called a masjid. He says, this place that you go to pray, I want to come with you. So he begins to go with him on a daily basis. Goes and goes and goes. So at one point, they miss the prayer in the jama'ah. So they pray at home. The son is leading the prayer. Well, rather, he, so, he tells his father, you know, out of respect, father, you know, lead the prayer. The father turns and says to him, my son, I don't even know how to pray. He says, you don't know how to pray? He says, I don't even know how to pray. He says, but you've been going to the masjid. He said, honestly, I've been going, but I don't know how to pray. I'm just looking at the other people. He was amazed. You know, this is his father. He never, you know, he, he never knew that. He didn't even know the basics of the prayer and the basics of Islam in regards to the name of the place that you go uh, to even pray. So, you know, he said, teach me how to pray. Asking his son, teach me how to pray. So he began to teach him the prayer, teach him, you know, the, 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 the sort of the fatiha to the end of it, to the point that now the father would go to the masjid and beat his son to the masjid. Yeah, and he had this love, he had this, uh, this desire to go to the masjid and to pray with the Muslimin uh, there, mashallah, tabarakallah. After a, couple, after a couple weeks, you know, he's still here in Saudi Arabia. He says to his son, teach me the Quran. I want to be able to read and memorize the Quran. So he says, subhanAllah. So he begins to teach him the alphabet. Within two weeks, his father was reading the Quran by himself. Though not Arabic, they never, he never studied Arabic. He doesn't have no background. Two weeks ago, he didn't know how to pray. 
Within two weeks, he is able to read the Quran by himself. He's able to read the Quran by himself. He then said to his son, this thing that you do when you go to this, uh, this black box, yani meaning the Kaaba, he says, I want to go there with you. He says, I want to go there with you. I want to go on Hajj. I want to do the pilgrimage. His son, when the time came for Hajj, took his father on Hajj. After they finished the Hajj, his father went back to the country. The son, the student here in Medina, gets a phone call from his mother. Imagine his mother's a Christian. He, she said to him, what did you do with your father? He's a total different man. He's respectful. He's not cursing. He's, he, he prays. As soon as the time comes for the prayer, he's going out praying. He's, uh, he, he became such a better man in every aspect. He's more generous. He's more caring. He's more loving. He's, well, he's, more ma he's better mannerisms. He's better in every aspect that you can think of. He says, I didn't do anything. Rather, it was Islam. Mind you, now he's using this to give da'wah to his mother. His mother said, whatever you did with him, I want to do. He said, she said, I want to come to Saudi Arabia, to Medina. She, he said, you know, mother, you know, you're not really allowed to come here unless you accept Islam. She said, I want to accept Islam. If this changed your father, then I want to change. Then I want to change. She ended up accepting Islam, I believe maybe over the phone. Within a couple of months, she came to Saudi Arabia. The same thing occurred. He taught her the prayer. He taught her how to read the Quran. She also went on Hajj with him. They went back and now the whole family structure is different. Yani, the praying together, learning together, living together. The shaykh, yani, my teacher, may Allah reward him, he says, this is what happens when a person is sincere. When they really want to learn, this man was maybe 70 years old, maybe 60 years old. No background, nothing came here. Yani, Islam, he was a Muslim, but Islam really penetrated his heart at that time. And he decided to really become religious really become diligent in regards to praying and then wanting to learn and then actually acting upon that knowledge when he returned it back to his country. Likewise, his mother, when she's seen the effect, when she's seen how his, her husband, this man's father changed, it, 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 it entered her to accept Islam. To the point that she accepted Islam, came to Saudi Arabia, to Medina, learned how to pray, learned the reading of the Quran, also went on Hajj, may Allah accept it from them, and then went back and now the situation is totally different. This shows the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one upon the student, that he was, inshallah, he was always making dua for his family. And this is from Bir Walideen, this is from being good to one's parents, that even if they're Muslim, you still make dua for them. And if you're like my case, where your family, they're not Muslim, at least not yet, that you're consistently begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change their heart, to open them up to Islam, to open up their chest to Islam, to guide them to an Islam. Look at this beautiful story. This man came here, meaning the student came here, just, you know, I'm gonna study Islam and I'm gonna do me. And because of this, because of this blessed university, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this as a way for his father to come here and to become religious and to learn how to pray and to learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then likewise, the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided his mother who was a non-Muslim, a kafirah, a non-Muslim totally to accept Islam, to come to Saudi Arabia, to learn the prayer and to learn yani, how to read and recite the Quran Kareem. MashaAllah, tabarakAllah, this is what happens when a person is sincere, when they work hard, when they are diligent, when they want something, they don't stop until they get it. Fi'l al-asbab, you do that which is required from you, and then you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid you with the rest. Ihris, ama yunfa'uka, wasta'in billah. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, work hard, ihris, work hard and that which benefits you, wasta'in billah, and seek aid and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how it is done. You do what you can do, fi'l al-asbab, you do, you do the actions that is required from you. And then you beg and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He aids you in the rest. You're sincere, you're hardworking, you're dedicated, you have a niyyah that is a tayyibah, you have a hadith, you have a goal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave you abandoned. He will not abandon you in your time of need. He will not abandon you in your calling out to Him. If you want to do good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid you. Do you think that you will be uh, yani calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wanting to be pious, wanting to be good, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will leave you? Rather, He will help you, but it is upon you that you take the means that you ask for the help that you that you have ikhlas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed we have sent down this dhikr, we have sent down this remembrance, who from you will remember? 
who is there anybody that will remember? Indeed, this Quran, it is sent down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who will take hold of it? Who will, yani, yatamassuku bi? Who will hold fast to it? Who will take advantage of it? Who will do these things? It is the person who has a good intention. It is the person who is sincere, that is willing to work hard, willing to do whatever they have to do. If they had to come 7,000 miles away to a country like Saudi Arabia, because they seen good actions from their spouse, meaning his mother, then if they can do that, what about you? A person that your, your family is Muslim, you're Muslim, your, your family, they have the basic knowledge. If this family can do that, what about you and your family? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes it easy for us and that He gives us ikhlas and tawfiq and barakah. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Very interesting video. Um, this is to teach us that even though we're young, we can still teach our parents one or two things if they're open to learning something. And this can go a long way and can apply to a lot of things. Another thing he says about, uh, is it converting? I always forget the word. There's a word that you guys use, what's it called? Reverting to Islam. If you're going to um, leave whatever religion you wanted in the past, to now become a Muslim or look into Islam, um, you have to be sincere with your actions. Don't just go through the learn the Quran because you want to attack some you want to attack someone that attacked you. No, it doesn't work like that because there's always some good in something that you may not expect. Be um, be pure with your intentions, and you will see good things in each and everything that you do it shouldn't be a situation of oh i want to get more views let me uh convert for the sake of getting new new more views no it shouldn't be like that you should convert because you want to convert convert not convert revert because you want to revert and revert because you're really that's why your heart is guiding you don't just do it for the sake of doing it don't just do it for the sake of your friends don't just do it because of peer pressure just don't do it for the wrong reasons that's what i'm trying to say otherwise a big shout out to the person that suggested this make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video